Welcome to Inner Dialogue. Inner Dialogue, a virtual program providing unique opportunity to closely understand NR industry in different countries. It's a one hour dialogue, or I would like to say an informal chat with a prominent industry leader in each country. The objective of inner dialogue is to extract grassroots level information about the status of inner industry in each country, future potential, understand the challenges ahead, support policies and uh, opportunities for investments in the country's inner sector, opportunities for trade and as well as for partnership or collaboration. There is only one episode in a month. Today, we are launching NR Dialogue with this first episode. And for this first episode, we have chosen NR industry in Myanmar. Myanmar is one of the emerging major producing countries of NR. I would like to say emerging because Myanmar has nearly 660,000 hectares of rubber area, although production now is only around 265,000 tons. That means nearly 0.7 million hectares of rubber area countries house. Even in the last 10 year period, Myanmar cultivated around 100,000 hectares of rubber. So that means the country is having a huge potential to increase the production of natural rubber. Rubber farmers in Myanmar are largely smallholders. They largely sell the produce in the form of unsmoked sheets or kaplam. Due to the same reason, same reason means selling in the form of unsmoked sheet or kaplam, they are unable to realize reasonably good price at their farm gate. But one farmer a medical graduate thought of bringing a change from this practice and to add value to the produce to realize higher income. He started a company named Dave Golden Land Company Limited. Dave Golden Land Company Limited. The company buys fresh latex from farmers, process it into premium quality RSS, mostly RSS 1 and directly export to China as well as other major consuming countries and regions. He is from the Tanindrai region, Tanindrai region of Myanmar, and Dave is the region's major town. Besides being the CEO of the Dave Golden Land Company Limited, he is the chairman of Tanindrai region planters and producers association. Our guest of today is none other than this medical graduate turned NR industry leader and the change maker. Before we meet him and start dialogue, let us view the RSS processing factory from a one minute duration video. After that, we will be, after viewing this video, we will meet the change maker. Let us watch the, view the video, one minute video at the moment.
having viewed the fact factory now let me introduce and invite with the immense pleasure dr yusen the ceo of the dave golden land company dr yusen hello hi uh, dr yusen hi dr yeah. yusen Hi, Mr. Jacob, and all the Dr. audience. Yusen, welcome yeah. to the Inner Dialogue as our esteemed guest of the first episode. The participants of today's Inner Dialogue is eager to hear from you to get more details of the Myanmar Inner Industry and the Dave Golden Land Company Limited. And before starting uh, the discussion let me ask one basic question so dr you said you always found very pleasant and happy what is the secret behind that yeah thank you so much mr jacob uh thanks also to all the audience uh about the, our dialogue and uh, thanks to also the uh, techno base uh this is a, a good chance to explore Myanmar rubber situation to the international. I am very appreciate and uh, I'm very interesting and uh, I will be share what the, from the, my experience about the Myanmar rubber sector. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Uh, Dr. Yusen, thank you. Uh, a bit personal, could you tell us about your life journey so far? I mean, your education, career, and uh, your entry into rubber industry. Briefly, could you share with the audience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I am uh, graduated from the Institute of the Medicine One Django, Myanmar. Uh, my bachelor is a bachelor of the medicine and a bachelor of surgery. Indeed, uh, I am a medical professional, but uh, uh, according to the, uh, our family, since uh, my younger age, uh, rubber plantation and uh, production business is uh, my main uh, family business. So after graduation, uh, the only one person who can uh, continue and uh, uh, to maintain and uh, develop the, our family business rubber plantation. So I have to change my professional from the medical to the rubber professional. Now I becoming a rubber man, <laughs> Mr. Jacob. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, so I have to continue my life. Uh, after concession of the, my family business, I extended the, our rubber farm more and more. And uh, I also established a rubber trading company with uh, my family. So I do the start trading, uh, not only for the plantation, I do the trading, dealing with uh, so many uh, uh, customer, uh, buyer locally and uh, internationally. Uh, uh, doing, doing the rubber business, I uh, interesting more and more about the rubber industry. Uh, my aim is a, uh, Touching to the international level. I feel that uh, most of the Myanmar rubber are poor quality and uh, uh, not a, a good image at the international rubber market. So why I explore and uh, uh, I study a lot from the international, I talking, I, I conversation with the, uh, our uh, customer from the international, what are the important factor to penetrate the international market. Uh, I noticed that uh, when I, I attend a lot of the seminar, a lot of the conference, international, local, uh, when I have a chance, I do uh, as a, a speaker, a represent of the Tenintai region robot sector, I do as a presenter, as a uh, represent of the Myanmar robot sector. So, uh, I can touch uh, step by step to the international uh, relationship with the rubber uh, community. 
Uh, finally, I got the idea. Uh, if uh, I willing to touch international robot market uh, uh, community, we have to change the, our Myanmar robot supply chain very properly. So I started there uh, and set up the, the way Golden Land robot factory for the uh, premium quality RSS production, consistency of the quality and, uh, and have to supply industry scale. I follow this guideline and I dash to the international society. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Mr. John, your speaker is muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? Thank you, Dr. Yusin, for the uh, brief discussion of your journey. And could you please give a brief profile of the natural rubber industry in Myanmar? Uh, for maybe the audience would be interested to know what is the profile of the NR industry in Myanmar, and what are the what is the prevailing processing factory processing practices, especially in the small holding sector, and. Uh, for oh, the presence of auto tire manufacturing in the country, and uh, what are the major other separating system, and what all things? Can you briefly uh, give a small picture about the profile of the industry as of now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, about the Myanmar industry, I want to uh, speak to sector. Uh, one is a uh, plantation and uh, managing and uh, production of the rubber farm. Huh? Another sector is uh, rubber processing and marketing. First, I, I will be uh, share about the uh, rubber plantation. Uh, rubber plantation in uh, Myanmar is uh, since a uh, long, long ago and uh, so many experience about the rubber plantation among the our Myanmar who are living in the remote area. They have a lot of uh, bare land. Uh, they can uh, get uh, the land very easily and uh, they can plant their rubber tree very uh, easily. But uh, one thing, very important thing is that uh, they have uh, no uh, proper knowledge about the choosing of the proper cologne, which are uh, suitable cologne with uh, their land, uh, suitable with uh, their uh, with a the condition, they know. And uh, another issue is uh, they want to uh, not do so much expand about the uh, Jan Nazari tree. They uh, easily uh, growing the seedling rubber tree with a, a low cost and I guess lastly choosing the cologne. And uh, another matter is a uh, Plantation technology is uh, not perfect. So most of the, our our farm in Myanmar are not uh, uh, not a suitable club with the Myanmar. So uh, this is uh, one of the issue why Myanmar rubber G are very low compared with the other rubber producing country. This is uh, one uh, main reason. Another issue is uh, uh, most of the our rubber. Uh, plantation area are uh, owned by the smallholder of farmer uh, religion. So uh, they are not uh, interesting about the uh, proper uh, tapping technology. They are not uh, interesting about the uh, proper processing of the rubber sheet. They ignore and uh, they uh, do very carelessly and they uh, processing the rubber sheet with a thick sheet and small sheet cut line like this. So uh, this is uh, also one factor for the low income of the Myanmar rubber farmer. So due to the this factor, due to the, this factor, most of the Myanmar rubber products are low quality and uh, uh, compared with the other country. So uh, low quality rubber means that uh, uh, have to sell with a low price for the market. So 
uh, why? This is a one reason we cannot touch to the international rubber market because of our rubber products are low quality. Uh, most of the international rubber buyer, like a, a big tire factory, a large consuming factory, willing to buy quality rubber. Eh? And uh, uh, what called the consistency quality, and they want to buy. But uh, our products are low quality, uh, have to need uh, recycling, uh, re milling. So they don't, they cannot pay the, uh, a good price for us. So compared with the other country, uh, even in Myanmar, so many uh, rubber area are planted, but the uh, rubber farmer are still low income in our country. So we have to change. We have to change from the beginning, beginning from the from the plantation, plantation side, from the processing side, and then we have to modify the our Myanmar rubber supply chain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And what about the presence of uh, auto tire industry? Uh, the tire are truck and bus tires manufactured in in Myanmar. And best tires in manufacture in Myanmar. So, uh, Mr. Jack, or the, uh, in the Myanmar, for the value added factory, uh, for example, uh, only we have two motorcar tire manufacturing in Myanmar. They can uh, consume very limited, very low amount of the, our natural rubber. So, uh, I can mention that the, most of the uh, Myanmar rubber are uh, go to the DSR factory. Okay. In okay. Myanmar, so many DSR factory, and then uh, it's go to the uh, China uh, to become a DSR recycling and uh, like this. Okay. This is okay. Understood. Understood. Yeah. Understood. Understood. So the problems as well as opportunities are understood. Uh, very clear. Thank you for that information. Okay. Uh, so at the moment, uh, when while answering to that, uh, we have also we have also come across the constraints faced by the Myanmar industry and the challenges and it means uh, we should say that the or we, we can put it differently. Uh, what are the priorities? We look at the priorities. We have a large extent of clone area planted with the low quality low quality clones so means yeah. there's a need of accelerated or mass scale uh meat plantation program yeah thing, sure and also uh, intensive training program to educate the farmers about the planting activities post handling post harvest handling uh harvesting as well as post harvest handling uh uh, so many things have to be training facilities are needed. Yeah. 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 Very good picture. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then another question. Uh, we are interested to know about the Dave Golden Gun Company. Uh, for example, what is how is that factory operated? Whether it is whether the factory is buying feed the latex from the farm small farmers or the factory is buying from the largest states. So how is the factory is operating? And uh, what is a, uh, what the factory is producing? Means uh, processing into RSS sheet, uh, if my understanding is correct. And the number of workers, uh, male and female, approximate number of workers. And uh, how small holders in the nearby area are benefited because of this factory? and how the company is managing the marketing activities, for example, identifying the buyers. Can you give a brief picture about the company's operation as a whole? Yeah, yeah, sure. A very good question uh, for me, Mr. Jacob. Uh, I want to share about the, uh, our the Good Land. The Good Land is uh, established at the 2016 in the, our native town in the way. Uh, the company set up by the, my rubber college, or, uh, all including the 22 member of the um, rubber planters. 
all our rubber planter in our region. My shareholder are the major rubber planter, the biggest 22 are we uh, collaborate together. And uh, our aim is uh, to penetrate the international rubber market by producing the premium quality RSS with the consistency specification and uh, industrial scale. Uh, this is uh, uh, what called the essential fat for the major uh, rubber consuming company like the Bristol, Yokohama, Michelin. I noticed that. So I started the, the strategy with this and uh, I built up the RSS factory in our region. Uh, our DJ, the way Golden Land uh, compound is a 30 acre area. We set up there, smoking house, processing, uh, building, uh, uh, grading and packaging, storage, uh, water treatment system. Uh, we uh, carefully design and we uh, establish. Uh, uh, about the our company, I am a CEO of this company and I have a management team uh, under me, uh, factory manager, uh, purchasing manager, production manager, uh, grading and packaging manager, and logistic manager and marketing manager, like this, uh, so many uh, uh, management uh, personality and a team I set up. Huh? Uh, about the manpower using in the, our uh, factory is uh, around about uh, 200 uh, workers in factory. Uh, we have a policy according to the international uh, preferable. We use an uh, equal agenda. We both uh, a woman, men pay the salary the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a very important, Mr. Jacob. Nowadays, very, uh, good. very good. Uh, this, yeah. uh, we have to follow in the international yeah. uh, time. Uh? Uh, so, we are following the uh, international labor law, international labor policy, environmental impact. We are precautiously mm -hmm. designed and uh, human rights no use of the forced labor, no use of the childhood labor, uh, mm -hmm. labor. we all support that in, in uh, our factory. So about the, our factory, when uh, we started in uh, 2016, uh, uh, we are very close with the, you know, WWF, WWF, Worldwide Animal Farm, an NGO in uh, Myanmar. Uh, they are also, their aim is uh, to preserve the uh, wild forest. Huh? So uh, another issue is a human right, uh, like an environmental impact, uh, precaution, their guidelines. So we are collaborate together, DGA and uh, the Golden and the WWF collaborate together uh, the same way. And another very lucky thing, uh, uh, Dana facility, uh, it's me from the British government, uh, aged to the Myanmar. Uh, we got a, a grant from the Dana facility for the project named that improving life of the smallholder rubber farmer. Uh, we do a project. Uh, from this project, we are uh, assist the smallholder rubber farmer. We buy very uh, comfortable price, a favorable price from the Rubber, smallholder rubber farmer uh, in the latex uh, condition. Uh, and also so many facility to support the smallholder rubber farmer. We do already a project. And a, a very important issue from this uh, for the sustainable natural rubber. Nowadays, everywhere, uh, especially a developed country, people are shouting sustainable, sustainable. Everything sustainable, sustainable seafood, sustainable wood, uh, also sustainable natural rubber. Also, they are shouting. Uh, from the, my information, uh, uh, 
2040, uh, most of the uh, rubber consuming company will be buy only the sustainable natural rubber. So we have to notice and uh, we collaborate together with the WWF, Department of the Agriculture from the Myanmar government, the NAF facility. We following the SNR guideline, uh, mesh with the GPS uh, and uh, global platform from the GPS. And so uh, we, uh, the entire region of the association also uh, one of the member of the GPS now, and uh, we uh, keep in touch. Huh? So uh, for the DGA information, I can mention nowadays we produce a premium quality RSS, RSS1. Uh, about 90% uh, of the, our product is a premium quality. Uh, only the 8% uh, are RSS3, 2% are RSS5. We, uh, how we collect the latex for the, our factory? We already have uh, 22 shareholders. They have uh, their own rubber plantation, uh, maybe more than uh, 10,000 acres. I want to the shareholder own the rubber plantation. From these uh, uh, rubber plantation, all the latex are sent to the, our the golden land factory. Apart from that, uh, our shareholder latex, we buy from the smallholder rubber farmer, medium side, large side, rubber fund. We buy with a very uh, comfortable price. Uh, it means that the same price we pay for the latex. Uh, what are they are getting, they have done the rubber sheet and uh, they have to change uh dry sheet we pay the same price as a dry rubber sheet in the nature of the latest so uh the rubber farmer uh, i noticed that uh, at first we are uh what call the phasing the problem they are worrying about the drc measurement about the uh what call the transportation that but uh, year by year now improving they noticed that uh, uh, what uh, they selling the latex nah, to the our rubber factory. Uh, we send the car, our truck to the, their farm. We collect the latex, and uh, we estimate the DRC, and uh, we pay the uh, money for them very quickly. So they can uh, so many advantages, Mr. Jacob. One thing. They don't need to do no more the rubber processing uh, rubber sheet. They don't need to do the sheet. So it means that, that they can uh, save their, their time. From the, their extra time, they can do another job. They can get the, another income. They can take care of their family very properly. Huh? Another issue is uh, uh, they don't need to handle the Unfound material like acid. They only uh, supply the latex and uh, they don't need no more activity about the rubber sheet doing. Another very important issue is uh, for the inter or environmental point of view. If uh, they do individually uh, rubber sheet at the, their farm, uh, waste water will be scattered uh, carelessly. Uh, when uh, we buy the latex and we process in the, our factory with the environmental safety, we use the uh, very carefully uh, using the natural water. We carefully doing the processing of the wastewater treatment system. So, so many advantages uh, we can get uh, from the, our uh, supply chain. And uh, I hope. Uh, one of the um, our supporting to the our war by saving the environment the impact, Mr. Jacob. Okay. A very good description. And yeah. Mr. Jacob, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? Yes. 
sorry. So I was recalling my memory. I visited the factory in 2018. I think I'm, I visited the factory in 2018, and uh, I was very impressed the way uh, the workers are being uh, being dealt with, managed, and also uh, not only paid, taken care of. So I have noticed uh, one a separate platform, and uh, I was told that that platform is meant for keeping the uh, the sheet bundles. Uh, usually it was kept down then uh, you the company got the advice that it should be kept little away even above at the platform so that the workers need not bend down so to avoid workers bending down uh, the company built a platform for keeping that so that is uh, is an example how well the workers are being cared not only uh, the gender equality in wages also very important. So it's a very good model Thank you for the very description. And also, uh, when you compare the total latex collected from the farmers, so a part of that will be a part of that will be from the shareholders, and a part will be from uh, smallholders which are oh, not shareholders. So what is the percentage of the total latex process in the factory? What is the percentage coming from the shareholders? And what is the percentage from the private sector who are not shareholders? Any idea? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, about uh, your question, uh, what uh, initial period uh, we are depend on the, our shareholder uh, latex? Huh? Uh, we have uh, initial phase, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, rubber farmer are not there to sell the latex. They have uh, so many questions. They are uh, worrying about uh, so many matters. But uh, year by year, no? uh, initial period, uh, I can mention uh, about 60% uh, of the, our latex uh, income is uh, from the, our shareholder. Uh, mm -hmm. For the rest of the 40, from the apart from the, our shareholder, smallholder, rubber farmer, medium size, and yes. uh, after that, uh, uh, two year uh, become changing a lot, changing a lot. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Notice got it. that uh, how they get the advantages from the selling latex in the, our factory. Uh, as I mentioned, so many factor they get uh, they happy. They know very well. And uh, nowadays, I can mention reverse that ratio now. <laughs> now, 60% uh, of the, our related incoming is uh, from the, apart from the, our shareholder, only 40% okay. from the, our okay. shareholder. Okay. Now, got change. It, got it. Okay. Got it. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Yusin was mentioning about the sustainability practices and the various practices adopted by the company for uh, for promoting sustainable practices. So, uh, does the company already uh, is the company already having a SNA certification or company is in the process of getting it? So, my question is whether the RSS produced by Davi Gordon Company is already SNR certified. Hello? Yes, uh, Mr. Jack, I want to share uh, one of important matter. Uh, even uh, we are uh, establishing, uh, producing the premium quality, if uh, the, we cannot find the a big buyer, it will be not uh, improved very quickly. Uh, very luckily, very luckily, we are closely related related with the uh, you know Southland Global Group of the company in Singapore, uh, a giant rubber company in the world. Uh, Fire Southland Global, Bristol Company. Uh, coming to the, our factory, Mr. Jacob. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times they visited, they guided the, our 
uh, technology, how to improve the RSS uh, processing, uh, they modify for us, they suggest uh, for us an audit and uh, feedback and uh, so many times. Uh, finally, we got uh, approved from the Bridgestone company for okay, the okay. supplier. Okay. We are the first one in the Myanmar. Huh? Okay, so, good. Okay. So, uh, about the, your question, uh, when uh, we are dealing with the Southern Global, we are dealing with the Bristol, we are dealing with the Yokohama, they are answering me. They are, they are questioning me. How about the sustainable route? How about the future of the DGA? So, I can uh, reply very definitely because we are in the processing of the sustainable natural rubber uh, production uh, strategy with the WWF Ghana facility. Uh, so for the, our factory, everybody, every rubber farmer uh, selling to the latex to us, we register. What's the, the owner name of the rubber plantation? How many acre? Uh, what's the cologne? Where the situation uh, about the worker, uh, woman, man, about the age, like this, land affair or not, we uh, uh, do a register for every our customer. Huh? After that, uh, we trace to their farm with the assist of the WWF, with the assist of the DOA. And uh, we do the Google mapping and uh, we put in the uh, computer and uh, uh, we are under developing of the traceability software system, collaboration with the WWF and GGA and the processing condition. Uh, I hope uh, very near future, uh, it will be finished and uh, we can show the proper traceability of the our rubber product in any uh, our rubber buyer. This is uh, very important for us. And uh, my aim is uh, after that, I will be, will be share the whole country, the whole uh, rubber community. Huh? Mr. Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Good description. Thank you. And then. So next question is, um, we were so far discussing about the current uh, business activity, activities we are doing right now. So looking long term ahead. So maybe uh, by 2040, how large would be Golden Land Company by 2040? So my question is, so my, my question is, what are the plans of Golden Land Company for the long term future? So, will the company foray into rubber product manufacturing? So, that's a company. Only there is a there, there is lack of manufacturing facilities in the country, especially big products as well as uh, non tire products. So, will the companies, that is one part of the question, will the company foray into rubber product manufacturing, like a tire or maybe non tire? or future plans, maybe by 2040, future, long term future, will the company spread its wings to start operations in other countries? So could you throw some lights on these questions? What are the plans for the long term future? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Jacob. Uh, this is a, uh, our future, our strategy for the coming. Huh? Uh, our Golden Land already have a business plan. We also design a business plan. Yeah? Uh, for your information, uh, now our Golden Land uh, produces a 4,000 metric ton per year. Yeah? And most of the, our uh, products are supplied to the uh, register. Uh, around about the 80% are directly supplied to the register uh, through the Southern Global. 
company. And uh, the rest of the 20% are exporting to the India, Yokohama tire factory. No? So uh, according to the buyer desire amount, we can only fulfill 30% of the, their requirement, Mr. Jacob. It means that uh, we can extend our product, RSS product, to fulfill the, our customer. Uh, another opportunity, as I mentioned you, uh, day by day, year by year, rubber farmer are uh, very happy about uh, selling the latex to the, our factory. Very convenient for them. So, uh, if uh, we extended uh, our factory, uh, latest supplier, we don't have to worry about the latest supplier. So many uh, rubber uh, farms, so many rubber uh, smallholder are willing to sell latest uh, year by year, day by day. Uh, we noticed that. that. So uh, it means that uh, we can extend the RSS factory more and more. This is a one option, Mr. Jacob. Uh, another, our business plan is uh, apart from the RSS, according to the Myanmar rubber supply chain, as I mentioned you, most of the, our rubber are uh, exported to the other country like uh, raw material and then uh, importing the uh, value added rubber product to the Myanmar. Mm -hmm. We uh, export with a low price and uh, we import with a high price. This is a very clear impact for the Myanmar. So if uh, we can set up like uh, India, eh? value add factory, small or medium size, mid size, collaboration with the international investor, eh? it would be win-win situation, Mr. Jacob. Another our strategy is that uh, we will be set up the value added factory, uh, for example. And nowadays, due to the COVID-19, uh, a lot of consumption of the uh, uh, such a glass. So if uh, uh, we can set up the glass factory, we can supply locally uh, to the Myanmar, no need to buy from the uh, other country a lot. Like this, so many we can uh, intervene and uh, we can uh, support the Myanmar government also and a win win situation. So, uh, this is a one example. We will be plan, we have a plan to do the value added factory, uh, like a latest concentrated supplying factory, clock factory, mattress factory, like this. Uh, depending on the situation. Uh, uh, one of the questions, we have an idea or not an idea about the extending the wing to the other country. Uh, uh, Mr. Jacob, uh, as a human being, uh, I am uh, able to extend more and more and more, more and more. Uh, but the uh, priority is uh, in the FASA in the, our country. If uh, we are big enough, <laughs> we will be extended. <laughs> but it uh, depends on our luck and uh, our situation and uh, our effort. Uh, another lucky thing is uh, uh, due to the uh, what called the, uh, our product, uh, quality product, supply, and uh, we are now a good image from the major end user rubber. Uh, they are in touch very closely with us. Uh, they want to promote us, especially the Southern uh, Global Rubber Group are behind us. They willing to do so many collaboration. They willing to do so many activity about the natural rubber sector in Myanmar. This is uh, what I want to give that uh, information to Mr. Jacob. Thank you for sharing the feature of compliance. So my final question, uh, 
Okay, maybe before the final question, one more question. So so far we yeah. are discussing about the discussing about the uh, Golden Land Company. Now coming back to the Myanmar in our in our industry as a whole. So how do you perceive the Myanmar in our in our industry in 2040 in terms of growth in production, domestic consumption, etc. So what are the long term challenges in the way for, for, forward for the Myanmar industrial industry? What are the challenges ahead? Do you have any policy suggestions for the accelerated development of NR sector in the country? In fact, we have just some of the points. Maybe you guys can elaborate what are the policy suggestions, what are the challenges and the policy challenges for the future development, long term development of the Myanmar NR industry. Yes, thank you. Uh, this is a very important question for the Myanmar rubber sector. Huh? So, uh, now with the uh, Myanmar government, uh, now under processing of the Myanmar rubber law, huh? uh, compared with the other country, Thailand, India, they have a each a, a rubber law for the each country. Uh, now, but uh, in the Myanmar, Nama rubber law is uh, under processing. I hope that it will be finished very soon. After the establishing of the Nama rubber law, Nama uh, had to set up the Nama rubber law, Nama rubber authority. Another very important is uh, like uh, other country, Nama central rubber marketing center. We have to set, set up because I have to need a uh, proper uh, networking with the international market uh, community. Yeah. So I hope uh, when I finish the, this matter, we can uh, assist, we can promote, we can control, especially the smallholder from a farmer. We have to share proper knowledge about the plantation, about the uh, processing, about the harvesting, about the quality of producing. And so we have to change their uh, ethic, their mindset, and uh, we have to guide them to the desire uh, situation. Huh? So uh, from the, my suggestion uh, for the Myanmar government, for the Myanmar society have to establish as soon as possible for them in my development. Another issue, I am trying with the WWF and the Department of the Agriculture, Myanmar Ministry, and Myanmar Rubber Vendor Association uh, to set up the global uh, uh, Myanmar platform for the sustainable development. Uh, which will be proper connection with the GPS and R and uh, have to follow it properly to get a sustainable rubber certificate from the Myanmar rubber products. Uh, this is uh, what uh, I'm willing to suggest. I'm willing to promote Myanmar rubber sector. Another issue is uh, I am also a member of the National Export Strategy Global Sector in Myanmar. So I frequently suggest, I frequently share about the international situation, what are important, uh, especially the sustainable natural uh, From the, my point of view, for the coming, coming year, year, for the future, uh, without the sustainable natural rubber supplying effort, we have to struggle very uh, difficultly. So sustainable natural rubber supply is a uh, very important and uh, uh, an outlet for the Myanmar rubber to the international market. Mr. Jacob. Thank you, Dr. Yusuf. Now we are coming to the final question. We have here an audience from different countries. As one of the leaders of the Myanmar industry, 
and the chairman of the Davi Golden Gap Committee. So what is your final message to the global nature of our community, particularly yeah. to the workholders and processes? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Uh, from the, my real feeling, Mr. Jacob, I want to say that the whole rubber community of the world, I want to say the message, let us grow together. So it means that the, for the rubber community, sustain and development, eh, I have to collaborate together, especially uh, smallholder rubber farmer, rubber planter, rubber manufacturer, rubber factory, rubber trader, dealer, rubber end user. We have to collaborate properly, very transparent, transparently, and uh, with the equity. Huh? We have to collaborate together and uh, we have to save the world by the producing with the sustainable natural. This is uh, my message to them. Thank you, Mr. Jacob. Thank you, Dr. Yusin. So now we have come to the concluding part. So let me now come to the, uh, uh, let me uh, summarize some of the points. The Dave Golden Company set a new beginning by bringing change from unsmoked sheets to premium quality RSS1. It shortened the supply chain by directly selling to the overseas buyers and brought positive change in the income of the farmers and uh, improvements in their quality of life. Yeah. Well, let this be a beginning. Let us hope the success story will get replicated among larger part of the NMR producers in the country and bring positive change changes in the country as a whole. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusen, for devoting your valuable time with us and generously sharing the insights. Uh, would you say any, a word of gratitude uh, to the audience, Dr. Yusen? Yeah. Uh, all the audience from the, our, our society, um, very thanks for uh, listening and uh, participating in the, our nature of our dialogue with uh, Mr. Jacob, assisted by the technologies. I hope uh, some uh, information, some uh, <clears throat> facts uh, about the Myanmar rubber sector. Uh, I will be happy if uh, you can get the uh, knowledge from the Myanmar rubber sector from this dialogue. And also, I want to welcome to all the rubber community, this basic to the, our Myanmar, our factory, how we are struggling and how we are willing to collaboration with anybody who want to develop them our rubber community. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Yusin. Thank you very much. Now, before we, we are closing this program, uh, let me announce the uh, next episode. The next episode of Inner Dialogue, or episode number two, uh, will be on February, 24th of February, 24th of February. That is the last Thursday of February. At the same time, there is no change of time. So the next episode will spotlight, will focus the NR industry in Vietnam, the dynamic NR industry in Vietnam. And our guest from Vietnam for the next month is none other than Madam Dr. Tran Thi Tui Hoa, who is popularly known as Dr. Hoa. So, 
So you see you again on February 24 for the second episode at the same time. Thank you very much.